All right, we are gonna talk about granuloma annulari. And so I have a few examples of granuloma annulari to show you right now. We have a punch biopsy here that's been bisected and you can see the epidermis looks relatively unremarkable. Uh, the action is really in the dermis here. So um, you can see uh, a cell population kind of intercalating between the collagen bundles with maybe a pale cytoplasm behind it. As you go on higher power, you'll notice within the center of these um, histiocytes, there's some areas that are a little bit less cellular and it's composed mostly of collagen um, with maybe a bluish material deposited in between the collagen. So we have a histiocytic population that's kind of palisading around. You have some smudgy collagen with um, mucin in between the interstitial space. So those components should make you think about granuloma annulari. Clinically, you'll know that these often show up as annular lesions. They can show up as papules, um, but typically they, they give you this hint that there's some type of granulomatous deeper dermal process because there does, there's not as much epidermal change on these specimens. And as you can see here, that makes a lot of sense because the epidermis looks pretty unremarkable. So it's a good example of granuloma annulari. Um, GA, if superficially biopsied, is going to be really difficult to diagnose. So always get a really nice punch biopsy. If you just did a shave here, you know that you would, you would miss a lot of those features of the palisading histiocytes. On the other section here, it looks a little bit more of a nodular aggregate of the histiocytes, but um, you can have interstitial pattern of granuloma annulari, and sometimes you'll get a mix of both interstitial and palisading in the same biopsy. Again, mucin is a key feature in making the diagnosis. So if you see increased mucin, you should definitely be thinking about a granuloma annulari process too. Um, sometimes young kids can get a deep granulomatous process happening. So if you get a story of a young kid and they've got some deep nodules on the foot, um, you can get this uh, deep GA or deep granuloma annulari where you have the histiocytic population uh, separated out from that more necrobiotic collagen uh, in between in some areas of really kind of acellular um, extracellular matrix material just kind of hanging out with the palisading histiocytes to the periphery. So um, don't forget about deep granular annuloma annulari. Now this can look a lot like a rheumatoid nodule and I'll explain in a different video um, and show you some examples of rheumatoid nodules, but the differential diagnosis for granuloma annulari does include rheumatoid nodule because you can get a similar pattern here of palisading histiocytes situated deep into the tissue with some necrobiosis and degenerating extracellular matrix in the center. Um, it's important to remember the differential diagnosis is anything that looks like this, um, you should include an epithelioid sarcoma um, because epithelioid sarcomas can actually look like a deep granuloma annulari or a rheumatoid nodule. So it's important to just make sure that the cells are actually looking pretty bland and they're not representative of a malignant keratinocytic population that way you would find in an epithelioid sarcoma. So we'll show some examples of epithelioid sarcoma in a different video, but just keep that in mind. You don't want to miss that as well because that's a highly testable entity. Um, another example of GA, this one was signed out as an interstitial granuloma annulari because you, you see more of a homogeneous separation of the histiocytic population in and amongst collagen bundles. And it's just kind of evenly distributed throughout the superficial and deep aspect of the biopsy. Um, it's not taking on a cake layering appearance like you would expect to see in a necrobiosis lipoidica. Um, it, it doesn't have that palisading that you would wanna see in a rheumatoid nodule. Um, often these interstitial GAs don't have a lot of extra mucin in them. Um, they're just kind of more of interstitial distribution of these clear cell, clear cytoplasm populations, which are histiocytes. Um, if you, if you weren't entirely, entirely sure you'd want to stain this, if there was a concern for like a metastatic breast cancer, you definitely want to stain these and prove that they're histiocytes and not some malignant, um, 
population from a breast cancer. Um, so you'd want to do maybe a keratin stain or something. If you had this on the chest of a breast cancer patient, you might want to do a GATA3, um, some other ER, PR markers just to rule out that, uh, rule out a metastatic breast cancer. But this is, um, this is just interstitial GA and anything with an interstitial pattern, we've got single filing in between the collagen bundles. Um, depending on the clinical context, you'd want to maybe do a CD68 stain to show that these are histiocytes um, just, to, just to prove it if, if there were other things in your differential that you were concerned about. And last but not least, a very subtle example of granuloma annulari. So you can see it's mostly superficial here. You've, the histiocyte population is kind of spread out, um, but you can see this rough palisading. Um, but the key here is there's a lot of mucin and there's a lot of histiocytes and there are some areas of acellular smudgy necrobiotic collagen. Um, so a lot of times these are a little bit nondescript, but hopefully the clinician is thinking granuloma annulari and puts it in the differential and they did a nice deep punch biopsy so that you have enough tissue to be able to put that together and say, yes, it is granuloma annulari. Sometimes you can, if, if they didn't put it in the differential, you could say granulomatous inflammation, see comment and the comment just described that, um, Granuloma annulari is on the differential diagnosis for this type of pattern.